Uh, greetings, 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 Dr. Sebi. Uh, once again, it is such an honor to be in your presence. I know I mentioned it before, but you were one of the catalysts in my uh, spiritual journey of healing and teaching people about the alkaline versus acidic diet. It seems like not enough people know about this information. Not enough people know about uh, the electricity we house in our human bodies and how our food is a conductor of that electricity and how we have to we have to eat the right fuels for our human body. And once again, it's just such an honor to have you here. Well, thank you. Thank you so very much for the invitation. And I hope that I am the servant that I am supposed to be not only to my race, but to the world itself. Dr. Sebi, I believe we left off at alkaline and acidic. Okay. About the alkali versus acidity, there was once upon a time in which there was no such thing as an acid food. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we live by the mandates of nature, where there were only alkali, which mean nature made, electrical. The difference with alkalinity and acidity is that alkalinity is electrical. Acidity is dead. And since the human body is electrical, common sense tells us, electric body, electric food. You call that in biochemistry, chemical affinity, meaning one and the same. They could marry, they assimilate. And if food does not assimilate, it cannot nourish you because it would never become part of you. You see, in medicine, as it's called, or food, food is medicine, really. Hippocrates said that. Right. This is precisely why the African people didn't have hospitals, no doctors, no. They were never sick. Right. Why? Because all they had was food, which was alkaline. No, they have nourishment. Now we have food. <laughs> food is starch. Food is potatoes, mm. yams, chicken. But that doesn't represent energy. That's death. Mm. Nourishment goes straight to the cells and nourish you, electrify you. There's a difference. This is why. The African woman didn't have doctors, and she didn't suffer with endometriosis. She didn't suffer with vaginal discharge or tumors, and we didn't have prostate cancer at a very early age of 80. The other day, when my last, next to the last baby was born, I have a little girl three years of age that was born to me when I was 77. When she, the mother, was pregnant, everybody said the baby was for the milkman. Well, I understand them <laughs> saying that because all of us that said that, we all we ate was acid food, and that have a tendency to diminish our energy right. and prevent us from performing. But you know something, brothers? Do you know that even though we may start at a deficit, these herbs are so powerful that all they require of you is to stop taking in the garbage, clean the body out, and take that electric food, and you're back in the saddle again. I, I love that. I, I love that. I wanted to ask you, how would you uh, instruct one to get off of food addictions to, to cleanse their body? You know... Pablo Medina is the young Mexican that works with me. He's very good at putting things together, synergizing, compounding, bringing herbs together, herbs that you guys have never heard of. So we put these herbs together. And today, look at this, what a coincidence. A group of sisters just came from uh, Houston, Texas to visit me, from Houston to LA. And I gave them some of this new tonic. Mm. Do you know that I've been talking since 11 o'clock today, and I'm not tired, and I'm talking to you now? <laughs> I'm not tired. So, besides not being tired, I'm not hungry, because the mm. cells are being fed. Mm. So, in order for us 
to break the addiction of eating, overeating ourselves to death, we need to nourish the cells. We haven't been nourishing the cells. We've been nourishing, we've been feeding our stomach. Right. Not the cells. Because cell food assimilates and you're going to feel good. <laughs> you're right. going to have energy. I got a little boy born to me two and a half months ago, which is David. I'm 81, but I'm still making these babies. But when I was 30, I couldn't make any babies because my penis just wouldn't get hard. And I was impotent. What type of diet were you eating uh, during this time when you were in your 30s? I was Ooh. eating eggs, bacon, cheese, uh. Canadian bacon, ham. Oh, man. I wow. know how to get down with some odd tails. Man, I could cook some odd tails <laughs> off the bone. And I have my odd tail. I got my rice and beans and sweet potatoes to go with it. Not to mention the collard greens. Right. Cook foods. So you see, but I love that. Man, I enjoyed it. I loved it. I mean, look, I could cook, okay? I've been cooking since I was five. <laughs> but when I went to Mexico, and the Mexican that healed me told me that I was eating garbage. I want to kill this man. <laughs> What's wrong with this dude? He said, man, you an African. And you, know, you don't even know what African used to eat. Ah. So shut up. I said, <laughs> 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 he said, if you listen to me, you will make babies in your 70s. Ah. If you don't listen to me, you're not going to live to see 50. Uh, I said, shit. I came back to L.A., and I did exactly what he said, and here I am making babies. I'm 81. What did he tell you to do? He told me to stop eating the trash because that was an African. You see, for us to say that we are in tune with the message of our DNA, you have to eat the food that corresponds with your DNA. And we haven't had that food in 500 long years. Right. Once you get on it, after you have cleansed the body, all of the things that you thought that you should know, they come automatically. You don't have to be told. You don't go right. read it and find the shit in it because you're not going to find it. It comes out of you. What are your, but, what are your thoughts on GMOs? Uh, GMOs. GMOs. Well, I don't know why you're asking me that when you know that that is already chemical. Right. All of it is chemical. Our parents didn't have any GMOs when they were in the jungle. They had everything alkali. Everything was electrical. Now, they, they have these serial killers, people killing themselves, they want to kill the police and all that, which is all telling us, hey, man, we sick. We uh. sick. Because anybody we should try to preserve is the police. Man, I love the police. I need the police. But right now, I'm so sick, I want to kill this mother. <laughs> so I want to kill myself. And then I hate the cops. In fact, I hate myself. I talk about I love white folks. We're lying. You don't love no white folks. Because you don't, don't even love yourself. So, so how could you love anybody? So you think some of the violence that's um, going all over the planet... You know, some of that has to correlate to what we're eating. The body is being broken down. Right. We're not eating anything that is nourishing it. So the immune system, which protects you, you have just undermined it. You say, man, I'm not going to give you anything to eat. Oh, yeah. You keep on doing that, huh? And I'm going to break down, and I'm going to teach you a lesson. You may not come back up, mother. So don't worry about it. You could violate me all you want, but there's going to come a time where you're going to wish you hadn't done that. Okay. That's right. So now, I remember when I was in New Orleans. You know, I'm from Honduras. I came away on a banana boat with a pair of tennis and white pants and shirt because I live in the tropics. Hmm. I mean, literally on a banana boat. But when I came to New Orleans, I began to listen to you brothers and sisters. And I learned a lot of things, man. I learned a lot of things from you. Man, I've never met black people in the world like you. But the one thing we have to stop doing is beating up on each other. Because, man, 
there's too much love in us to share. Right. I'm, I'm curious as to what you would tell the person that said, you know, I don't know how I can afford this diet. Well, there's nothing to afford because to, to really begin with, it's cheaper. When you wake up in the morning, what you going to eat? You're not going to eat no eggs and pancakes and bacon, ham and all the rest, cheese. Right. I used to eat that. That's costly. When I wake up in the morning now, man, I take a glass of water. And I may take some sea moss and put it in the blender with some hemp milk mm. and sweeten it with some agave. And that stuff has so much energy that I'm talking all day long. I had these people that came in from Houston, mm. to the magazine, to do an article on me. And I still wrote them. And I'm 81, you know. I should be tired by now. I've been talking <laughs> to, to talk today. I've been talking. Now, I, I wanted to ask you, do you think that there is a correlation of blood types in, uh, in how you eat or your diet? Well, you're right. Again, you're right. I know you're always right. There <laughs> is a direct correlation or a direct relationship with food and cellular predisposition. Gorilla doesn't eat polar bear food. Right. Okay. Eagles. And Quetzal. Quetzal is a bird and so is an eagle. But an eagle doesn't eat any seeds and fruit of the Quetzal. He eats meat. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now we go to the other one. The lions. He don't want anything to do with grass. But the elephant, hey man, that's all I want is some grass. Right, right, Please. right. But if you look carefully, all of the animals that are carnivorous, carnivore, they die young. And all the herbivores, they go in their hundreds. Mm. There's a difference. You and I, because we haven't been able to contribute any energy towards the, uh, this area of our journey, and it seems as though this is the time. Not that we couldn't have done it. Not that we shouldn't have done it. It wasn't the time. The time is now. So we're getting this message that the black man, the black race, was never supposed to put milk in his mouth. Was never supposed to put meat of any kinds and also starches because it offends the body. It makes us live a little bit out of sync. A little bit out of sync. A white man wrote a book, Mr. Pavo Ariola how to get well in his book direction two he says if your ancestors are european your body is programmed to digest milk but if your ancestors are indian or africans your body is not programmed to digest milk but black people were never shown that in school Hmm. So the result of that is every black family in and out of Africa is suffering with some forms of anemia because milk is anti-black. Right. So, But listen to this. Okay. 1983, Dr. Landedov came from Abidjan. I was given a talk on sickle cell anemia. We cured sickle cell anemia. So I went to hear what this Frenchman had to say. And he said, after 14 years of research and monitoring, this man exhibited lactocomia under certain stress conditions. And all the doctors on Harvard University clapped and gave him a standing ovation because this doctor said that the patient exhibited lactocomia. Hmm. I said, isn't this something? So I stood up, and everybody was amazed because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a colleague, but I saw the bulletin board. So I went and just break into this meeting at Harvard University on Georgia Avenue at the Sickle Cell Research Foundation. I said to them, I said to the doctor, Dr. Landedoff, pardon me, but uh, gentlemen, I'm Dr. Xavier, I'm an herbalist. 
I'm not, not part of your repertoire. I'm not part of your medical uh, science. But I have some questions to ask because we both are for the benefit of humanity. Dr. Landedal, did you say that you monitored this patient for 14 years and he exhibited lactocomia under certain stress conditions? He said, yes. Do you disagree? I said, oh, no, sir. I don't disagree with anybody, and I never disagree with anyone. Mm. My question to you, sir, lactocomia, is it a derivative of lactic acid? He said, yes. And lactic acid is a direct uh, byproduct of milk? He said, yes. I said, what is your sickle cell doing drinking milk? Right. That Frenchman looked at me and realized he just committed a boo-boo. <laughs> but everybody looking at me and they pissed off because I jammed this man. But I got to jam this man because he's placing himself as an authority, like they're telling us right now about Ebola. Right. There is a cure for Ebola. And I know it because if I cure AIDS, I could cure Ebola too. Right. So what are they talking about? But because you and I are not responsible for the thing that we need to do for ourselves, and we left others to dictate to us, then we become vulnerable. So, so would you say that some people, it's okay to not be vegan. It's okay for some, for some, for some humans to eat milk and cheese and, and some not to. Oh, that goes well with the white race. Okay. It goes well. They have to eat meat. Huh. Why would you but say that? Us. Hmm. So I'm glad that they make these cows because the cow was made. They made the cow, they made the goat, they made the lamb, they made the chicken. They now, made all that. Now, why do they need that for their system? Because they are not of the same structure as the black race. They're different. The Eskimos are not the same as the black either. It's not that we are better, though. Right. We're, we're made different. I, yes. Our, yes. Our genetical predisposition is different. Our color is different. The amount of carbon concentrated in us is different. We, we have a higher concentration of carbon. And that's for our melanin. Melanin? And what's that? Remember, our bodies are composed of 102 minerals. What is melanin? You don't find that in the ground. And if you don't find the ground, you're not going to find it in my body. Huh. So there's a word that came about like protein, like enzyme. Right. You don't know what proteins are. And you don't know what melanin is. You, you don't know. None of us know melanin. Cut it out. They, <laughs> they want to hide the truth. <laughs> the truth is, it's carbon. You just said, hey, you niggas are loaded with carbon then we would have a different feeling about ourselves. <laughs> okay, we okay. We are, we are electrical. Because, you know, bra, it is carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that causes the pulsation of electricity. So black folks, yeah. Yes. We are concentrated with carbon. The blacker you are, the stronger you are. Mm. So, I mean, we, we live in this society where, you know, there's Band-Aid cures and, um, you know, we're, this is a business of disease. You know, where, where, do, where do you fit in to the business of disease? I'm assuming that you're not, you know, why don't more people know that you have cured AIDS? It, it baffles me. Um, well, no, 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 no. Uh, I used to get pissed off. But I have a friend named Mel. And me and Mel, Mel been knowing me long before I even think about curing anything, but even curing myself. So, Mel and I always rap on things. And the one thing that we always come to the conclusion to is that things never occur before the time. Okay. I want the case. Proving that we cure AIDS, sickle cell, lupus, herpes, cancer, blindness, paralysis, and others in 1988. How come they haven't responded? It wasn't time. It wasn't. I'm not, not, not going to blame Oprah Winfrey or Maya Angelou or Firecar 
We're not going to blame just Jack. Right. We're not going to blame 